Well, today's story is a real wow story. Um, but first of all, I'm going to see if you can see what these wow moments are that I'm trying to recreate that you might have experienced. So you've got to use your imagination here and see if ever you one of these. Now it doesn't show up ever so well in the daylight because if you have had one of these before or seen somebody with one it probably would have been quite dark and you would have been sitting in a lovely cosy seat with your friends or family waiting for something to happen. I wonder if you actually have ever held one of those. I did and it came from the pantomime. Now the pantomime is at the theatre isn't it and it was very exciting getting ready to go for it, trying to anticipate what might happen but then being surprised when all sorts of unexpected things did. You know, sitting there at the beginning all the children had their spinners then the lights went down and the music started and the curtains went back and wow, we were transported into a totally different imaginary world and we stayed in that world for a good couple of hours and then when we came out we looked at each other and we all began to share what we had thought about it and actually we really wanted to go and see another show straight away but we couldn't. Now you might not have been to the pantomime but I'm sure you might have seen a show when some players came to your school and you had that same feeling of wow when they did things that you weren't expecting. Now here's something which I'm sure all of you will have done. So start off with, this might not work but we'll give it a go. Are you ready? Oh, it didn't work. <laughs> but we got a bang, didn't we? Oh, we got a smell. Let's try this one. Oh, <laughs> that one didn't work either. Well, that was a bit of a wow moment because, <laughs> of course, the string is supposed to come out of the end, isn't it? But we got the smell and we got the bang, didn't we? And then I wonder if this reminds you of something that might happen. Ooh, shows up a little bit against my dark card. Can you guess what I was trying to recreate? Well, it was fireworks, wasn't it? So November the 5th, firework night. Now, you might have been lucky enough to go to a firework celebration, but even if you didn't, or you haven't had them in your own garden, I'm sure you'll have seen them in the sky at night. And you hear the whoosh, and the bang, and then those fireworks explode in the sky, don't they? And each firework sends out its own special lights, which are always really exciting. And everybody does go, Wow! And then when you get to the end, somebody usually says, this is the last one, just to, so that you don't get too disappointed if it suddenly stops. But you want to see it all over again, don't you? Because it's been so amazing. Well, I had a wow moment on holiday a few years ago when I was lucky enough to go somewhere where there were some beautiful mountains. And one day we were given the opportunity to travel up in a cable car to go to the top of the mountain. Now it was a little bit disappointing because in the morning we were told that it might not happen because cloud had covered the top of the mountain and there wouldn't be anything to see when we got up there. But we were very relieved when we were allowed to get into the cable car and up we began to go. And it was a little bit frightening being so high up because I'd never been quite as high as that before. 
and we began to look down and see everything really small beneath us. When we got to the top, we all got out and it was snowing, which was absolutely amazing. And although there were a few people at the top, it was so quiet and we were able to find a quiet space where there wasn't anybody at all and just take in all the views. And it was amazing because not only could we see the top of the mountain that we were on, but we actually looked down on other mountains, which was fantastic. Um, now, I hadn't known what to expect when I got up there and I was a little bit nervous, but when I got to the top, I can tell you, it was absolutely wonderful. And it was really disappointing when we realised that it was time to go down in the, the cable car to let some other people come up. When we got to the bottom, we got out and I looked back up that mountain and I, I almost couldn't believe that I'd been to the top. And of course, what I really wanted to do was to get back into that cable car and go up and experience it all again. So I did take one or two photos, so I'm just going to quickly show them to you now so you can see. Now the story I'm going to tell you today is called the Transfiguration, which is quite a long word, isn't it? And it just means transformed, when something changes. And I'm sure you'll all be familiar with Transformers. They're toys, aren't they? Which change from one thing into something quite different and then you can change it back again. And this is what the story was about. And it comes from Mark chapter 9. And the story takes place when Jesus has been uh, going around teaching people and healing and very often at the end of the day he would go with his disciples and they would perhaps find a quiet place where Jesus could go and pray. And we think this probably happened in an evening because we know from another reading in the Bible that the disciples were actually quite tired. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James and John to the top of a mountain. No one else was there. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance changed and his clothing became dazzling white, far whiter than any earthly process could ever make it. Then Elijah and Moses appeared and began talking with Jesus. Teacher, this is wonderful, Peter exclaimed. We will make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He didn't really know what to say, for they were all terribly afraid. Then a cloud came over them and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly they looked around and Moses and Elijah had gone and only Jesus was with them. As they descended the mountainside, he told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until he, the son of man, had risen from the dead. Well, I found some pictures actually, which I'm going to show you now, and uh, I think they might help you to imagine what that might have looked like. Well, what an amazing experience that would have been for Peter, James 
and John, wasn't it? And so unexpected. They thought they were just going to do their usual quiet walk with Jesus and then perhaps pray with him or sit or lie down while he had a quiet time by himself. But no, wow, something absolutely amazing happened. And they were used to seeing amazing things happening when they were with Jesus and he healed people and the way that he spoke when he taught. So this was something which far surpassed this. But firstly, it was the two people that Jesus appeared with. Now Moses and Elijah had died many, many years before this happened, but they recognised them somehow because of course they were really familiar with Moses and Elijah from the scriptures. Now Moses and Elijah were really important people. They knew that Moses had led God's people out of Egypt to the promised land. They knew that Moses had been given the Ten Commandments by God. So they really thought that Moses was somebody very important. And Elijah, he was one of the greatest prophets that there had been. And he had spent many, many years prophesying the coming of the Messiah. So when they appeared alongside Jesus, and the disciples knew that Jesus was somebody really, really special. Now, they were so taken unawares that they didn't know what to do. And of course, they were really rather frightened by the whole thing. But that wasn't the end of it all, because not only was there Moses and Elijah, but then they heard God's voice speaking to them, just to them. And God said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. So perhaps God was actually saying, you've listened to the people who were in the scriptures, Moses and Elijah, but now this is someone new who you must listen to and his word is really, really important. Now, Peter wanted to do what was right, and he, he the first thing that came into his head was that he wanted to build three shelters or shrines for the three men. Perhaps he wanted the moment to last a little bit longer, or perhaps he thought that that was just the right thing to say. But then, Suddenly, the cloud came down and enveloped all of them. Well, that must have been quite an experience in itself, mustn't it? And then, when the cloud lifted, then Jesus had just returned to how he was before. So, do you think they felt a little bit like me? That they wanted to experience the mountain again all over so they could really think about it and understand what had happened to them. But Jesus said that they mustn't tell anybody until he had risen from the dead. Now they didn't understand that at all of course. So things would become clearer later on in their lives. But they came down from the mountain and they must have been really changed, mustn't they? From the three men who'd walked up that mountain with Jesus just a short time before. And I expect they replayed their experience many times over and over again in their heads as they realised what a wonderful thing they had witnessed. And we often in the Bible read of wow moments that happen to people, but you know, they don't just happen in the Bible, do they? They can happen in our own lives as well. And 
I know that sometimes we perhaps don't really relate them as coming from God, but we know that all things come from God, don't we? So my mountain that I went up is part of God's wonderful creation. And I have to say, it did give me a wonderful feeling that I was close to God. Perhaps you've listened and heard a piece of music and it's made your spine tingle and it's become a special piece of music that moves you every time you hear it. And God has given us the music too, hasn't he, through the person that composed it and through the person that performs it. So God does give us wow moments lots of times in our lives and it's good that we're ready to recognise those and just sort of reflect on them and think how we can use our lives uh, and make them better through having experienced that. So I thought it would be really nice today if we said a special wow prayer. Now, if you watched the Pancake Messy Church, Messy, messy Pancakes or Messy Lent, then you will have seen Sean making a prayer tent or a prayer den in the living room. If you haven't watched it, you can still find it on our Facebook page or on YouTube and do watch it because I think you'll enjoy it. But she talked about different ways of praying and she had a stone and she had a cross which she held in her hand. Uh, but I thought today we might use a different way of praying. Now you've seen Kirsty, I'm sure, doing the Lord's Prayer and we use our hands when we're doing that in junior church. But I thought today we would use our bodies and because it's a wow prayer, it's got to be something which is really big. So I'm going to do a wow prayer with you now. And perhaps you might like to use these wow type prayers later on when you're by yourself. So have a look and see what you have to do. Right, well, I hope you're ready for your wow prayer. So we're going to do it using all of our body today. So you need to start off either kneeling or squatting. Now the prayer I'm going to say, I'll put it up later on so that you've got the words, but um, just for now, I'm going to say it for you. But shall we just practice? I'm going to make a mountain shape because I think the mountain was in our story. That would be a good way of reminding us of it. So we're going to grow make the shape of the mountain and a real wow at the top of it. You need to put your hands together because that's going to be the tip of our mountain. It's going to gradually grow. Up high and then wow as we're at the top of the mountain. Bring everything down below and then our mountains come gradually back down again. do that. Now I'm going to say the prayer with you while we make our mountain once more. I'm just going to start off squatting. It's a bit easier for me to get up. We're going to think about the way that we need to be ready to recognise those wow moments in our lives where they just happen at the most unexpected times. So that's what this wow prayer is about. Jesus, you can make ordinary things special. You can surprise us when we least expect it and make us do things differently. Help us to be ready for those wow moments in our lives. Amen. Right, now we're going to do that one more time, but I'm not going to say a prayer because I want you to have just a little think and see if you can think of your own wow prayer. It could be about you, it could be about your family, or it could be about 
you you know, or it could be a huge prayer about the world. So have a little think. Then you can start to pray it in your head or out loud when we make the mountain shape. I hope you thought of something to pray about. If you didn't, it might just give you an idea of something you might like to do on another day. But don't go away because we haven't quite finished yet. Well, I hope you enjoyed doing your wow prayers. But now I'm going to test you on what we've done today. <laughs> but it's not going to be a horrible test. It's going to be a nice test. You need to have a fizzy drink. I've just got fizzy water there. But you might like a flavoured one. Some ice cream. And a glass. And a spoon. And we'll see if we can do a transfiguration of our own, shall we? So, first of all, see if you can remember who were the three people who changed or who appeared in the story. Of course, Jesus was the one that we'd remember first of all, wasn't it? So, I think we deserve... One scoop. For remembering Jesus. Now, what about the other two? You might not be quite so familiar with them. Oh, well done. Moses. So, we deserve another scoop for remembering that. What about the next one? E Elijah, well done. Now, if you didn't remember those names, don't worry too much. Perhaps this will help you to remember them. Right, so we've got our three scoops. Now, we're going to see if we can recreate the cloud that came down and covered the disciples and Jesus, Elijah and Moses by adding our sparkling drink. I can hear the fizz. Do you see? Wow. Mm. Just like the cloud at the top of the mountain. And I expect after a while, it will gradually disappear. So, well, I'm going to enjoy my cloud now. Perhaps you could have a go at doing that yourself afterwards. It's not a bad test, is it, Matt? If only all your tests at school were like that. Mmm. <laughs> right. See you again another day. Bye.